This is the Faith Life Radio Program with Pastor Michael Stevens, presented by Common Sense Retirement Planning, sharing the nature of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, offering encouragement and insight so you can enjoy a strong, healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Michael Stevens. Welcome to the Faith Life Radio Program. This is Pastor Michael Stevens. I'm pastor at Faith Life Church in Liberty, South Carolina. What a great day. What an awesome day. It is a grace-filled day. Uh, Jesus is Lord. He's our Lord and Savior, and it's just good to be with you this morning. Uh, listen, we, uh, we pastor at a church in uh, Liberty, South Carolina called Faith Life Church. It's located at 990 Chastain Road. We're currently meeting at... Uh, the Career Center. If you uh, you need a church home or you'd love to come and worship with us, we invite you to come. Uh, our number is 864-502-8009. That's 864-502-8009. Our website is thefaithlife.org, thefaithlife.org. If you have a prayer request, if you need healing, Hey, reach out to us. We have uh, prayer ministers available, and they will return your call, and they will they will lead you to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Praise God, and they'll help you be healed in Jesus' name because God does want you well. Praise God. He's a good, good Father. But uh, just thank you for being with us today. We're, we've been on a series called I Am Who God Says I Am. How important is that knowing who you are in Christ? knowing the finished work of Jesus Christ and all that he has done. Uh, You know, once you understand the true nature of God, that God is love, that God is good, and all goodness uh, comes from him is so powerful. Once we understand the finished work of Christ and what uh, he did on that cross and that empty tomb is so powerful that you live from a place of victory and peace with God, that, that God didn't need workers. He doesn't need workers. He doesn't need an army. No, he wants his children. Praise God. He wants his children, and he sent Jesus to get his children. And so who we are in Christ, you know, our position, our rights, our benefits, our authority, and the, the power that he's given us is so important. So let's today, let's go over into, uh, if you turn over, if you are able to get a Bible this morning, turn over to John chapter 1. But I want to go to uh, Ephesians uh, once again in Ephesians 1, 3 that says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, not will, but he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Man, awesome. You have been blessed with every, all, spiritual blessings by God. God didn't hold anything back for your life. Everything you'll need, everything that, that God has, he's, he's, he's put it out there for us to receive it. And that's called grace. Grace is, is everything that God has paid for, everything that he's done for us. Grace is his favor. Grace is his presence with us. Grace is his enabling power. And you have that right now. Praise God. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have all that right now. And so it's so important to know what you've got. Uh, Once you understand what you have, uh, it will change the way you pray. It'll change the way you live. And you'll begin to experience and taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, we say this many times, but Jesus never brought a religion. He brought a relationship with your father. And your father wants a relationship with you. And so he's already, what Jesus has accomplished, he's blessed you with all spiritual blessings. That's benefits, rights, resources. Listen, he's already paid for your healing. He's already paid for your salvation. He's already paid for you to have joy and peace. He's already prayed prayed, uh, paid for you to have prosperity in your life and to do well. And this is our father. This is this is his desire. Uh, we've just been going through the, uh, the book of Ephesians and seeing so many things. And I, I'm just going to share very quickly some of the things we've seen over the last few weeks. He's designed you, he's defined you, and he has designated you. He's blessed you with all spiritual blessings, benefits, rights, and resources. You've been called by God. You've been gifted by God. You have God's grace on you. You have God's peace on you. He actually calls you a saint. He made you holy. 
He sets you apart. He says you're blameless before him. He says you're accepted by God. You've been made a son or daughter of God. You've been redeemed. You've been forgiven by God, gifted with grace and faith from God. It said last week we talked about this this beautiful thing that God has done. He says you are his workmanship, which means you are his masterpiece. You're valuable. You're a treasure to God. How did this happen? All paid for by Jesus Christ. And then he gives us the faith the ability to receive this and believe this. You know, faith is the power to believe what Jesus has done. See, I don't have faith in myself. I have faith in Jesus. I have faith in his word. And uh, getting into the word of God and letting God define himself and letting him define who you are will change your life. Amen. Let's look at John. We're going to look at John uh, uh, chapter one, and we'll start at verse eleven, and just receive today. I, I just, uh, I just want you to receive with the Holy Spirit, and we know that the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Uh, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. He'll redirect you. He'll remind you, and he'll help you renew your mind to the truth. Okay, and so the Holy Spirit is just going to do a great work in your life today, as we're talking about the Word of God. Just be expecting, you know, hope. Hope is the expectation of God's goodness. I wake up every day and I expect the goodness of God because he's good. That's where all goodness comes from. So I want you to begin expecting the goodness of God in every situation, okay? John 1, 11 says this. It says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Now, we understand he came to his Jewish people and, and, and they, he was rejected by the Jewish people and the Gentile people. Both rejected him, but he said he came to his own. And what I love about this is God comes to you. I said, God comes to you. He comes to you. He comes for you. The truth is God pursues you. Uh, we talk about many times on our side, us pursuing and going after God. And that, that's an awesome thing. But let me assure you that God has been pursuing you from the moment you got here on earth. Praise God. People began to pray. God had people pray over your life and pray that you would receive this gift of salvation and and who Jesus is. God has always been in pursuit of you. So you would know him. So you would receive this beautiful gift of Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior. Let me assure you that uh, putting your faith in Jesus is easy. It's not difficult. Right now, if you're listening to me right now, you can pray this simple prayer and you say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God, that you died for my sins. And I just put my faith in you right now. You rose from the dead. Forgive me of my sins. I, I believe you. It's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, man has made many things complicated. Religion has made many things complicated. But let me assure you, the word of God and God has nothing to do with religion. It's about the relationship with the Father. It's about what Jesus has accomplished. And so it says he came to his own. And so God God came to you. The Holy Spirit, from from the time you, you hit earth, praise God, had been working on drawing you to receive Jesus and to receive this relationship. It, it is God's will. What is God's will? God's will is you. It's not the systems of the world. It's not all this stuff. God's will is you. God wants you, and he wants you to know him. He wants you to receive him. Listen, the greatest act on earth that you'll ever do is receive Jesus. The greatest act. You could build companies. You can build businesses. You can have inventions. That is all good stuff. And most of that comes out of the wisdom and the the know-how from God that he gives you. But the greatest act you'll ever do on earth is receive him, not work for him, not religion, uh, not trying to modify your behavior. (laughs) All these things we try to do out of the flesh, which they never accomplish the things that need to be done. But faith in Jesus, believing in his word with a heart belief begins to change your life. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. And so this is receiving time. 
If you're listening to me today, you just need to receive him. You need to receive him. If, you, if, you, if he's not your Lord and Savior, you need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. If you need healing in your body, you need to receive that healing. If you need peace right now, he's giving you peace, and you just need to receive that and acknowledge the peace and the joy of the Lord. Whatever you need, the answer is Jesus. Whatever you need, the answer is worshiping him. Praise God. He said he came to his own and his own did not receive him. In verse 12, it says this, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. See, receiving him is the key. And I want you to notice in the scripture and listen, the word is the final authority. Not how you feel about it. Not what someone has told you. Go to the Word. Read it for yourself. Because if you will read the Word, the Holy Spirit will meet you there, and He will read with you. Praise God. The Holy Spirit reads the Word with you. He helps you give, gives you revelation and understanding. He says in verse 12 here, John 1, 12, But as many as received Him, you received Jesus. You received a relationship. You received his forgiveness, you received his grace, you received his mercy, you received his righteousness, you received his healing, you received his power, you received his holiness. I received my Savior. I didn't receive religion. I didn't receive a list of do's and don'ts and, and all this, And but I received a relationship with the Lord Jesus. See, you, you've been created and you've been designed for a relationship with God. You were never created for religion. You were never created to try to make yourself into something. No, you've been born again on the inside. Praise God. And so my, my faith, my faith is, is the power to receive him. Faith receives him. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right. Oh, my gracious. Look at that. Isn't that powerful? You have the right. In other words, God has given us rights. He's given us gifts. He's given us benefits. He's given us promises. He's given us power. Do you know your rights? Praise God. Do you know your rights? Do you know the rights that, that through Jesus Christ that you have been given? Many, you know, many people I meet, and, and, and it's, it's not a bad thing, but I don't want people ignorant to the love of God, the grace of God, the goodness of God, the faith of God, and what Jesus has accomplished. Listen, the biggest thing that happened in your life has happened. You've been born again. And so he says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right. I have the right to be a son of God. You have the right given to you by God to be a daughter of God. That's, listen, that right to be a son or daughter of God is not based on behavior. It's based on what Jesus did in the cross and the resurrection. And so when I received him, when I, when I put my faith in him, I have these rights. I have a right to be a son, okay? Uh, knowing God is knowing what Jesus has given. If, if you want to know God, find out what Jesus has paid for and what he's given. And I, I speak to you today because some of you, your, your relationship with God, you think it's bad, and I'm telling you it's good. It's just because your feelings and emotions, and maybe you, you're falling, maybe you've failed in different areas, it doesn't change how God sees you, how he loves you, the gifting on your life, the relationship with God. You don't have the power to change that relationship with God. He loves you. He is for you, and he gave you the right to be his son or daughter of God. You know, when I, when I was born physically, you know, I was born and there was mom and dad. And regardless of my behavior, I was still their son. Praise God. And then I still had a dad. I still had a mom. It wasn't based on my behavior. It was based that I was born. Okay. So look at this. It says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. That all happened in one second. <laughs> when you called upon the name of Jesus, you became a, a son or daughter or God. The greatest thing you'll ever be on earth 
is a son of God or daughter of God. Let me say that again. The greatest thing you'll ever be on earth in eternity is being a son of God or daughter of God. Man, just praise him right now and give him thanks that you are a son of God or a daughter of God, that he is your father. He has given you the right. How did you get that right? You put your faith in Jesus. You put your faith in what he accomplished. You put your faith in what he has done. And in that moment, you became a son with all the benefits and rights and privilege and honor of being a son of God. He says to them, he he gave the right to become children of God. Okay, what does God want? God wants children. He's not needing an army. He's not needing professional Christians. He's not needing people to debate for him, defend him, or anything like that. Praise God. He just wants his children. He, he, he makes it so simple and so beautiful. What an awesome, beautiful father. Father, we just praise you right now that you have given us the right to be sons and daughters of God. I pray for people right now. You're listening to me. I just want you to claim your rights. Praise God. Claim your right that you are a son or daughter of God, and it was paid for through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. No more probation salvation. No more condemnation. No more putting yourself down. Claim your right. God claims you. Claim him. Amen. We'll be back in a few minutes. God loves you. God has called us to impact the community and the nations. God has called us to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to preach, teach, and demonstrate the Word of God. And that's what Faith Life Church in Liberty is all about. Faith Life Church is a spirit-filled group of believers that love God, His Word, and His presence. We want to help you discover who you are in Christ and to help you become a disciple of Jesus. Come discover that God has a good word for you. Visit thefaithlife.org. That's thefaithlife.org. You're listening to the Faith Life Radio Program from Faith Life Church in Liberty, presented by Common Sense Retirement Planning. Let's get back to today's teaching with Pastor Michael Stevens. Hey, welcome back to the Faith Life Radio Program. This is Pastor Michael. I pastor at Faith Life Church in Liberty, South Carolina. Once again, it's so great to be with you. Listen, our number is 864 502 Eight zero zero nine. Our website is thefaithlife.org. Uh, we're continuing in the, uh, talking about I am who God says I am. And uh, what a such a critical thing for us to know and understand uh, the nature of God, the love of God, and what Jesus has accomplished for us. We were over in John uh, uh, chapter 1 and in verse 12. And let's just go back there, and it says, but as many as received him, praise God, and understand you're receiving him, or you're receiving a person, you're receiving Jesus, uh, you're not receiving a religion, you're not receiving a denomination, you're not receiving a pastor, <laughs> you're, you're receiving a person, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as many as received him, and, and listen, you were created and designed to receive him. And I go a step further. Faith is easy. Faith is easy. God has gifted you with the measure of faith to believe him. It's easy to believe. Who told you it was hard to believe? Praise God. Uh, one of the beautiful things about God is I, I believe in through the scripture and just uh, my relationship with God is God makes things simple for us, not complicated. And so when things become complicated, step back and just Take a look at Jesus, praise God, because everything about Jesus, you'll see the Father. You, you see, when Jesus went, he healed them all. And let me assure you today, if you, if you need healing in your body today, that Jesus, through his stripes, has already paid for you to be healed. It's not getting him to do something, it's receiving what he's already done. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at John 1, 12 again. It says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. And so we see that our father, he wants children. And uh, if you put faith in the Lord Jesus, you are a child of God with all the rights, all the benefits, all the privileges, all the promises. And he is your father. Praise God. 
And so there's something powerful about a father and, and a child. You know, children have a father and the father will father them. Your father is fathering you. He's the source of all the wisdom, all the goodness, all the promises. He, he's your father, okay? He, he's not an angry God at you. You're his child. And I, I know this can be, uh, sounds so simple, but I really think we really need to get this in, in our heart that we are his children and we have the right to be his children through Jesus. And he is my father. He's my Abba. He's, he's, he's my daddy. He understands me. He knew what he was getting when he got me. Praise God. He knew the things up ahead of me. I, I say many times that God has a rescue plan for you already planned out if you need it up ahead. He has your healing plan. Anything th that you will walk into in life, God has already gone there. And he has your rescue, your deliverance, your healing, your wholeness, whatever you will need because he's a good father. And so he, he, he said we become children of God. The other thing you, you learn about children, children are dependents. Praise God. If you ever filled out tax forms, you understand that. If you got children, they're, they're, you put them down as dependents. So I'm dependent upon my father. I'm not independent. I'm not doing this and living this life all by myself and how well I can do it and how well I can live life and how well I can live for God. I can't. <laughs> I need the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God inside me. I'm walking this relationship out with God and the Holy Spirit through the Word of God also. And so children are dependents. And, but the other thing about a father, uh, uh, we're being his children, is a father is responsible. God has responsibilities. And, and, and so my father is responsible to love me, provide for me, protect me, prosper me. My father is active. He's not absent. Praise God. He's active in my life every day. He's not far away. No, his spirit lives in me. His voice, I hear his voice. I, I relate to my father. You know, for a father not to speak to their children, that would be abuse. That would be terrible. But let me assure you, your father is speaking to you. It might not be in the way that you think because you're, you're wanting this audible voice, but he's speaking on the inside. He takes your heart. Sometimes you can look at something and you can see God in it. Praise God. You want to see, see the power of God? Walk out today. Look up in the sky. Man didn't do that. Praise God. God did that. Man came to look at a blade of grass. Man can't even produce a blade of grass. That's your father, your creator, the creator of you, the designer of you. And so he's, he's your father. And uh, it, as many as have received Jesus, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Now look at that. Isn't that so simple? to those who believe in his name, and we're talking about Jesus, that there God made it simple. Salvation is simple. A relationship with God is easy. Now, I know there have been books written on how difficult it is, but I don't see it. I don't see it in the Scripture. I haven't experienced that. It's easy to relate and believe someone who loves you. Who loves you more than God? What can separate you from the love of God? Praise God. And so I have a loving father that I can relate to, that he understands me, that I can share with, and he shares his heart with me, and I share my heart with him. He changes me through the relationship, okay? I'm not trying to change myself through beating myself down and, and, and keeping all the rules. No, I'm being changed by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. I'm being changed by the relationship with God. Listen, wherever you are right now in your relationship, stop putting yourself down. Stop condemning yourself that you're not further in a, a, along in your relationship and you still got this in your life. Just enjoy the relationship. Relate to God. You're being changed. You're being changed from the inside out. He says here that, that he gave us the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name or believe in Jesus. See, believing him is receiving him. 
if you put your faith and believe in what Jesus did, not what you can do for God. Listen, that power, that love, that grace will all come out of your life as you have this relationship with him that you're not trying to do things, but through your relationship with God. And believing his word, the power of God, the grace of God, the love of God will come forth, okay? It says, to those who believe in his name. Well, his name is Jesus. Now, his name, Jesus, when we pray in the name of Jesus, that's not a tag on, praise God. But what you're actually doing when you pray in the name of Jesus is who he is and all that he accomplished. He's God in the flesh. Jesus is Lord and Savior. Jesus through his sacrifice, has made you accepted. He has made you part of the beloved, been transferred into the kingdom of God with all these rights and benefits and the right to be a child of God. You know, and, and so everything that Jesus did on the cross by his stripes in the empty tomb, that's what it means when we say in his name. And I, I said this a few minutes ago, but listen, God claims you as his child. You see, in the scripture, right in that scripture we just read, he claims you as his child. And I want you to claim your father. I want you to claim your Abba, the one that you cry out to, the one who knows you. Claim your father. Don't claim a religion. Don't don't claim uh, your own self-righteousness, what you can do for God. Uh, Claim your father. Look at verse 13. It says this. It says, who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let's go back to verse 12 and get it all together. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, you're related to God by birth, not works. Let me say that again. You're related to God by birth, the new birth, being born again, not by your works. Works will come out through through the love of God and your relationship with him. Listen, for some of you, it's just, uh, I need to say this, and you'll have to take this in the right way. Stop working for God. And start enjoying a relationship with God, then the real works of God will start coming out of you. You're working so hard, you're, you're so tired, and, you, and you, you lay down at night, and I'm talking to someone, you lay down at night and you feel so undone, you feel so unaccepted. That's how you're feeling, that's what you're believing, because you're, you're making yourself the Savior. Jesus is your Savior. Understand that you're accepted by God, loved by God, so stop working for Him. And start enjoying the relationship, and then you're going to see the power of his love and the power of those works come through your life. Amen, amen. Praise God. He says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of man. Listen, I wasn't born again or became a child of God based on my earthly parents or my family. He says, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. I'm not a child of God based on what I can do for God or any works. That doesn't make me a child of God. He says, nor of the will of man. I'm not a child of God based on what another man says or who I know. I'm a child of God based on what Jesus did and faith in him. And you have been born of God. You've been born of his spirit. See, salvation is not going to the front, signing a card, (laughs) praise God, (laughs) or joining a church. Salvation is you put your faith, the Holy Spirit drawed you to see Jesus. And you put your faith in Jesus. And in that moment, you put your faith in Jesus. The Spirit of God came into your spirit, and you became one with him. Now the Spirit of God dwells in you, lives in you. You have been born of God. I was birthed by God, not by what I could do, not by man, not by my earthly parents, not through flesh and blood. 
Now, this was a spiritual salvation. This, when, when I called upon Jesus, no, his spirit, who he is, began living inside of me. You know, I said this Sunday at, at, at church that you have a creative spirit because God is the creator and the spirit in you is the spirit of God. You don't have a junior spirit or a less than spirit. You have the spirit of Christ. Your spirit is righteous, pure, holy, blameless. You have the same spirit that Jesus had. Praise God. Praise God. Let's look at another scripture very quickly. John 17. And, and we might have to go through this quickly, but just listen and receive. I, I just want you to receive that thing. Do you understand what Jesus has done for you? Do you know your rights? Praise God. Do you know you have a right to be a child of God today? That you have all the promises and all the things are yes and amen to you. Look at John 17, John 17 and verse 20. And, and this is Jesus praying uh, to the Father and talking to the disciples that are there with him. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. He said, I, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Do you know that Jesus prayed for you? He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe. How many have you believed in Jesus? Jesus prayed for you. I guarantee you his prayer is still active and his prayer is still working. What does prayer do? Prayer is not begging because children don't beg. Children have. Children receive from their father. Okay? Prayer has nothing to do about begging God. Prayer receives what Jesus has already paid for. Prayer receives God's goodness. Prayer receives the good news. Prayer receives who you are in Christ. Praise God. And so Jesus said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Now, we, we believe in him and not in ourselves. That's such a key because I think many times in this walk, we start trying to believe in ourselves and we look at ourselves. How will we do something? And then we we try to parallel that to how much God loves us. Listen, his love for you is not based on what you do. It's based on who he is. Oh, praise God, receive that today. See, believe what God has done in you through Jesus Christ. Believe that born-again spirit and what he's put in you. Believe what he's done in you. See, I believe God's word. I believe about what he says about himself and also about me. Look at verse 21. It says that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. What is God wanting here? What is Jesus? He wants unity. No separation. Uh, you know, unity with the body, but the greatest unity you have is that you have unity with the Father. You're one with him. There's no anger there. Jesus took the payment. He, took, he paid for this. He took the wrath. He took the sin. And so you have this beautiful relationship with God. There's no separation. He wants no separation. So you've got to get separation out of your heart and out of your thing and that you're one. You're created to be one with God. What can separate you from the love of God? See, what you're doing is you're showing the world what it looks like to be loved by God. Look at verse 22. And the glory which you gave me. Do you understand that God put glory in you? His beauty, his nature is inside of you in your spirit. You have God's glory in you. He says, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. You got it. You got it. Praise God. You got his spirit. You have his glory, his nature in you. That they may be one just as we are one. See, you're going to have to get this oneness in your heart. And you're going to have to agree with God that you're one with him. Even on your worst days, even when you mess up, it doesn't change that you're one with him in the spirit. You were created to be one with him. So you have the Jesus relationship with God. Look at this last verse. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to believe? He says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me, my gracious, praise the Lord. He put his righteous spirit in you. You have the perfect 
perfect, righteous spirit, the complete spirit of Christ in you. And God loves you the same as he loves Jesus. Now, we say that, but will you believe that and receive that? Can you say that right now, that God loves me the same as he loves Jesus? I say it again, that God loves you the same as he loves Jesus. Amen? Believe and receive that. Hey, we'll be right back. God is for you. He has a good word for you. Amen. God has called us to impact the community and the nations. God has called us to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to preach, teach, and demonstrate the Word of God. And that's what Faith Life Church in Liberty is all about. Faith Life Church is a spirit-filled group of believers that love God, His Word, and His presence. We want to help you discover who you are in Christ and to help you become a disciple of Jesus. Come discover that God has a good word for you. Visit thefaithlife.org. That's thefaithlife.org. You're listening to the Faith Life Radio Program from Faith Life Church in Liberty, presented by Common Sense Retirement Planning. Let's get back to today's teaching with Pastor Michael Stevens. Hey, welcome back to the Faith Life Radio. God is for you. God has a good word for you. Hey, this is Pastor Michael. Once again, uh, we pastor at Faith Life Church in Liberty, South Carolina, We're currently meeting at 990 Chastain Road in Liberty, South Carolina, the Career Center. But we have a building project going on. We have 6.4 acres that God has provided. It is paid off. Praise God. And we're building a building there. Hey, come out and join us if you want to worship with us. Uh, We also have a phone number, 864-502-8009-864-502-8009. Our website is thefaithlife.org, thefaithlife.org. You can reach out to us either way. Leave a message. We'll return a call to you or online. You need prayer. You need healing. You need someone to talk to. Hey, we're there, and we're going to give you Jesus. Praise God. That's all we have to give is, is Jesus and all that he accomplished and all that he has done. And so we've been talking about I am who God says I am, and we were finishing up in, in John 17, and we learned in this scripture in John 17, 23, Jesus said this, I in them and you in me made perfect in one. Made what? Perfect. Praise God. Do you know there's a perfect part of you? It's in your spirit. It's your spirit. You're born again spirit and Christ in your spirit, one with him that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. And so God loves you the same as he loves Jesus, not based on your behavior, not based on what you can do for him, based on his love for you and your faith in Jesus Christ. Let me, let me say this. Stop trying to pay for this relationship and receive this relationship. Stop trying to pay. You can't pay for this. <laughs> you can't pay for grace. He's so awesome and good. Well, hey, I've got a couple of friends with me today and um, brothers in Christ and mighty men of God and who I love. And uh, praise God, they love me. Man, it's, it's, listen, Amen. there's something beautiful and powerful about relationships in, in the kingdom of God. Uh, one of the, the greatest uh, powers you have and authority you've been given is to have relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I have Kyle with me and I have a, a Philip with me today. And, and we're just going to talk uh, and ask them a few questions. And, uh, and I, I, Hey, it's good to have you guys. Good to be here. Praise good God. to be here. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, you know, Kyle shared last week a little bit about his testimony uh, of where he came from. And uh, uh, can you just give us a brief? Uh, yeah. Um, so I grew up, uh, youngest memory was being taken from my family, put into orphanages and foster care. Uh, and uh, it was uh, quite the experience. Yeah. But somewhere along the way, I mean, you, you came into this relationship, you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but that was like, what, three, four years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago. It was a ago. long time. But the Holy Spirit was in the midst of all of it, working, protecting you, and, and you know, it was rough. The things you went through is rough. And listen, you could be listening. You're going through some rough things. Let me assure you, God is there. Amen. Just call out to the Lord. Just call out to the Lord. 
He's your deliverer. He's your savior. He will help you. And so you came into a relationship about two or three years ago with, with, with Jesus. And then, praise God. And then on the other side, we, we have Philip here who, <laughs> Uh, you got born again at what age? When I was seven years old. I was thinking that our stories are so different with Kyle, but uh, I had a wise man tell me one time, he said, God's the master teacher, and he has a unique lesson plan for every one of us, and none of them are the same. But uh, God gave me, a, uh, and unlike Kyle, God gave me a wonderful mom and dad that loved the Lord. And I was in church every time the doors were open, literally, because my dad worked at the church. He was a music director. and uh, But I had a wonderful mom and dad. But God convicted me when I was seven years old of my need of a Savior. I went forward. I knew what I was doing. I asked Christ in my heart. I hadn't got a, a lot of religion messed me up. I just knew that I needed to be saved. I was under conviction by the Holy Spirit. I knew that the Lord, if I asked him, he would come into my heart and he saved me when I was seven years old. Now, I've, uh, uh, you know, I've had to learn so many things since then. And at 62 years old, Pastor, um, I've had the greatest year in my life. Uh, uh, God, God doesn't give up on people and uh, he so I'm so thankful that I had a a good father. Not everybody had a good father, but I, but I always knew if if God loved me more than my mom and dad did, I had it made. And uh, I was thinking about what you were saying earlier. You know, in the summertime when I'd get up, I didn't think about what I was going to eat. I didn't think about what I was going to do. I just went and found Daddy. And when I went and found Daddy, he had me food. He protected me. He had me. Uh, what we were supposed to do. He had me a purpose. Um, God, yes. and, and so, you know, I had a good example of a loving father. So it was easy for me to understand that, uh, you know, God loved me, but you know what? It took about years for religion sort of to beat it out of me. By the time I was uh, uh, in 20s, I thought God was mad at me. And uh I and, heard, and many of the people that you're talking to, they feel the exact same thing today. And if I look back on it, I said, how could I feel God would be mad at me? My dad used to always tell me I would get in trouble or I would need something. And sometimes I would hate to go to him and say, Dad, I need something. He would just say, don't say that. We're in it together. Praise he would God. always tell me. He said, we're in it together. And that's what God's tell. You know, it took me a long time, but I kind of had a disconnect there. And I heard a great man of God say one time over the radio, so praise the Lord for radio. Yes. He said, never forget, said, God saw you the day you were born, the day you died, every ugly thing you did in between, and loved you for Jesus' sake. Praise God. And I said, that's right. I knew what propitiation meant. I knew that all... God's wrath was laid on Jesus Christ, but somehow I didn't apply it to my life. But thank the Lord, uh, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the word has just come alive to me. Praise and God. I yes. understand that if if my dad loved me, how much more does God in heaven love me? And we're in it together. Praise God. That is awesome. You know, as Philip is... Uh, Speaking here, I, I just thought we, we have Kyle here who uh, came through the foster care system. We had Philip who had an awesome mom and dad who believed. I was uh, just had a single mom, uh, and my father was an alcoholic. And so you actually have three different <laughs> ways. But, hey, he's the same father. It's the same Jesus. It's the same grace. It's the same mercy. It's the same power. And that has changed all of our lives. And the reason we're here today talking about God and his love and Jesus is because of what Jesus did on that cross Amen. in that empty tomb. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, uh, there, there's a word that we, uh, we talk about a lot uh, in, in the word of God and just with one another. It's called grace. Um, you know, when we talk about grace, uh, we're talking about God's favor for you. In other words, there's favor on you. There's constant favor on you. It doesn't move. It doesn't go away. Uh, constant favor. It also means his presence, and it means his enabling power. Okay? God's grace, his favor, his presence for you, and his enabling power. 
And and so, Kyle, you know, I, I'm sure through your life, we, we've all needed the enabling power or the favor and the presence of God. How has God's grace been working in, in, in your life? Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would give thanks to God even through all the things that I went through. Because he never left me. He was always with me. Amen. Through all of the the abuse or the the uh, hardships or the loneliness, and he's he's there for anyone listening too. Yes, and uh, so I would say the grace of God in my life is uh, is amazing because last week we talked about this and I could hardly get the words out, and I was thinking that no matter how painful it is to talk about. Uh, I am also reminded about uh, the fact that he set me free from all of it. Praise God. Yeah. You know, so we, were, we, were talking about, we were talking about forgiveness and yeah. uh, how how in your life you came to the point that God enabled you to forgive and release that, which actually set you free. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was in the world, I would have told you a completely different thing, Pastor. You know, my hatred for the people that... Well, you, you, they that abused did those you. things, yes, yeah, that yeah. abused us, yeah, and uh, you know what I would have liked to have done to them, you right. know, in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but uh, as I have found, well, I shouldn't say I have found him. He found me and my wife, uh, and rescued us. You know, you said early he chases after us. Mm -hmm. So he found me, and he set me free of all of that, uh, and now he's replaced that with love. So it's a hard thing to do, but I bless those people, even the people that abused us and hurt us. You know, we bless bless them, and uh, it's a very very hard thing to do. But uh, forgiveness was key to uh, my salvation and Him setting me free. So, and He can do that for anyone listening too. You know, people who've gone through those same things, people with good families, people with fathers who were alcoholics, and He can do that for every one of you. Praise God. Praise God. The grace, the favor, the presence, the enabling power. And so what grace did for Kyle, it enabled him to forgive and actually set him free. If you're out there dealing with situations in life, let me assure you, if you're a child of God, you have been given the power and authority to forgive, to release. And you don't do it by feelings or emotions. No, you do it by faith. Everything you do is by faith in Jesus Christ. And I can just lead you in that right now. You can just say that person's name, say, I forgive this person in the name of Jesus, by faith in you, Lord Jesus. And I release them and I bless them now in Jesus' name. It's that simple. It's done by faith. Now, feelings might come back. Emotions might try to come back. But no, you go back to that moment. No, I release them. You know, Philip... Uh, even the grace of God in your life, and I, I know somehow the grace has been working over the last year. Amen. <laughs> year. But uh, some of your grace walk and, and the grace of God that you're seeing in your life right now. Um, I was a prodigal son for a long time. And, uh, you know, we, we, all have our, uh, we all have our journey. But uh, a year ago, I was at a – my wife encouraged me to go with her to a gospel truth conference in Orlando, Florida. And it was a little different for me. And uh, But that's where Terry and I prayed and asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And like I said, the same thing that uh, uh, Dwight L. Moody said, it when he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it felt like rivers of liquid love. Amen. But at this gospel truth conference, they would pray for your healing, uh, physically for your healing. And I wasn't used to that, not like they were doing it. And uh, uh, so uh, they would have people up front, pastor, you know, prayer ministers. And if you had a wayward child or you were depressed or you needed some, you know, uh, to pay, be able to pay your rent next month or whatever, they had people that would pray with you. Mm -hmm. Well, I hadn't told my wife this, but I had a real bad physical problem for over a year. And it's hard to talk about because um, 
it, I was bleeding, and it, this, and so I'm being real honest here. It was uh, I call it my issue of blood, like the Bible. <laughs> but every time I went to the bathroom, I was bleeding and bleeding a lot um, to the point I was getting weak. I was losing so much blood, but I was in such bad shape. I uh, mentally, I was just like, if I go to the doctor, I'm going to end up with a colostomy bag because we have cancer, you know, colon cancer in my family. And I said, I'd just soon die than have that. But after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the next night, I said, well, I was thinking to myself, maybe I need to go forward because this was, I was, I was in bad shape and I hadn't told anybody. So I told Terry, I said, I need to go forward and have them pray for me. And she's like, for what? And I said, just come with me. And uh, she said, okay. And I said, we got to find a guy, not a girl. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to tell a girl this. And so I go forward and I tell Tell the man what my problem is, and I'm losing so much blood. And uh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And what he said was, "Do you think God can heal you?" And I said, "Yeah, I think God can heal me. He can create the world. He can do anything." And then he asked me something. He said, "Do you think God wants to heal you? Do you think it's God's will to heal you?" And I that just took me. I said, "I don't know. I don't know." And he said, "Let me minister with you a little bit." And he showed me. He said, "Do you believe Jesus is the exact representation of God the Father?" And I said, "Yes, I do," because God had showed me that. Um, and he said, "Well, he took me through these verses where God was always willing to heal. Jesus was always willing to heal. He never turned anybody down. He never said no. He never Amen. said, I'm doing it to you because, and he showed me this. He took a long time with me. And he said, now, do you believe that Jesus wants to heal you? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, he showed me another verse. He said, well, if any two agree on anything that's God's will, You'll have what you request. Praise God, yes. And he said, look, I'm going to anoint you with oil. I don't usually do this. But he said, let's pray. And I prayed, and we sincerely prayed that God would heal me. Well, I didn't think much about it after that. We had a great service. But that night, no blood. The <laughs> next morning, no Praise blood. God. A year later, not a drop of blood, God healed me. And, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I know that... Uh, uh, I think I think God healed me instantly because he knew I was going to die uh, if something wasn't done. And so I'm trying to learn these things in my heart and know what the Bible says about healing. But praise the Lord. His grace is constant. Amen. 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 Praise God. That's just an awesome story. And it's the truth. Listen, hey, he's healed Philip from physical. He's healed Kyle from emotional, he will heal you. In fact, Jesus has already paid for your healing. Right now, just receive the healing of Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus, I receive your healing. Uh, if it's a physical need, just speak that out and receive healing in that area. If it's an emotional, receive the healing of Jesus because he loves you and it's been paid for. Amen. Hey, listen, we've had a great time today. Love sharing the goodness of Jesus with you. God is for you. Reach out to us, uh, the Faith Life Radio. Our website is thefaithlife.org. Remember, God always has a good word for you, and God wants you well in Jesus' name. You've been listening to the Faith Life Radio program with Pastor Michael Stevens from Faith Life Church in Liberty, presented by Common Sense Retirement Planning, helping you discover who you are in Christ and helping you become a disciple of Jesus. Come discover that God has a good word for you. If you'd like more information about Faith Life Church, visit thefaithlife.org. That's thefaithlife.org.